Do you have plans to study abroad or have you been thinking how exactly do I get things done? You are on the right channel. Once again, my name is Danielle and you're watching Philomat Plus Galivanta. In today's video, we will be discussing requirements that would land you an admission without stress and without spending so much. Without further ado, let's get started. So, I've been getting a series of questions about how exactly can I study abroad and what and what do I need to study abroad. So, I decided to make this video to educate people. So, the major problem is a lot of us have been trying to study abroad, but we do things the wrong way or we um, tend to not follow instructions and it costs us a lot. So, this tips or requirements I'll be stating here would actually help you to get it done once and for all. But before I even dive into these tips, the first thing you need to know is whenever you're trying to study abroad and you already did the basic things like trying to understand the school and their requirements, you need to stick to whatever they ask you for. If the school says they want this, ensure you give them this. Because if you do otherwise, you end up applying, paying application fee, and then you still lose the opportunity. So why not get yourself ready by doing what is right and then applying? And you land yourself an admission and then the process is all over. You don't have to spend 30000 for an admission that would have just cost you a hundred so let's dive right in number one thing i believe is really necessary for you to have when you plan to study abroad is your documents before you plan to study abroad of course there would be a course that you intend to study maybe a master's degree a bachelor's degree or even a phd or something and for every of this course that you have an intention to study, there's always a prerequisite document or degree that you need to have. So for example, I'm applying for a bachelor's degree abroad. It means I need an O-level result as an African. WAEC or NECO is actually important. So all around the world, like it's more like a standard, a basic thing that we all know is to have five credits minimum of five credits and for me i would advise on this video that you have nothing less than a c4 you know it keeps you on the safe side if you have a c4 it's better for you because you don't have to deal with some school saying that you shouldn't have anything less than c4 or some would accept c6 some accept c5 which is actually good but on the other hand why would you have a lesser credit point and then you still go ahead to apply and then you get denied admission so for all level prerequisite please ensure to have good credit points minimum of five credit points then if you're applying for a master's degree it means your prerequisite document or degree should be a minimum of 2-1 which is a second class upper as we all know so second class upper some schools accept second class lower but it's best to have second class upper that means when you already start your bachelor's degree in nigeria or wherever you are ensure to aim at graduating with a 2-1 if you have a 2-1 then you have the chances or higher opportunity of applying for a master's degree abroad and also if you're applying for a phd ensure to have a 2-1 also in your master's degree and also a very good thesis that's one major problem that we also face in nigeria or in west africa some of us maybe do not have a very good thesis or project topic 
and then it gives us a problem why we are trying to apply to a university abroad because they are going to ask you for a portfolio for what you have done so far in the previous degree and you should be able to tell how you are able to achieve this how you are able to do this thesis and how you succeeded at it too you need english exam or entrance exam not all schools require you to have english exam or an entrance exam but um it's good to prepare your mind and also write these exams especially if you've made your research and then you already know that the school will be needing an entrance exam or an english exam just find out whatever um requirements i mean in terms of the band how much score the school needs and then try as much as possible to aim for an higher score it gives you more opportunity not just to get an admission but also opportunity to get a scholarship your passport uh for you to travel abroad you need an international passport so get that ready before you even apply at all get it ready because it helps you number 1 when you're trying to make this application process the passport your international passport is one of the things that you need to submit so get it ready don't start and then you start applying for a passport and then before you know it you lose the opportunity of even studying in that particular semester so get your passport ready before time third thing is tuition have a goal set a goal of how much can i really afford don't go wasting your time searching for schools abroad or something you know when you do not even have a goal of how much you know that you can afford you know so how much is this tuition fee and get it ready don't wait until you get an admission before you start running all around or just try to avoid last minute problems you know like selling your land or putting your parents into trouble because you're trying to get admission you know so try to do the right thing prepare for this before it comes at all but eventually you don't even get the admission but at least you have your money ready you can try again number 4 confidence and eloquence In today's admission processes around the world, things have really changed. There might be need for interview and quiz or exam. So, especially for interview, you need a lot of confidence to be able to show this admission officer that you're worth the opportunity. You need good English speaking skill or even eloquence to show that you're worth this opportunity. And another point is good internet access. If you're a Nigerian or you live in West Africa, you know, you need good internet service to avoid problems during your interview or during your quiz or exams. So, uh another point also is that as I mentioned earlier, try as much as possible to prepare your mind, try to prepare your mind towards interview or quiz, you know? because most of these schools always require at least one of the two for quiz you need to study hard about the course you're about to you know gain an admission for you know or for the interview you need confidence and eloquence in the language of study also one very crucial thing that you need to know is motivational letter everybody interested in studying abroad needs a motivational letter the motivational letter includes something about you why you chose the course why you chose the school why you chose that country you know what motivates you why do you think you're the best fit for that department or for that course of study so you need to write the motivational letter in a very convincing way to tell the admission officer that you're worth this opportunity. Another point is application fee. Not all schools require you to pay application fee, but it's good that you prepare your mind that at some point you might need application fee. And how exactly do you intend to pay this money abroad? Application fee sometimes ranges from $50 and above. So try to prepare your mind and try to find a means, you know. Maybe you could, you know, find out or get a friend who lives in the country of choice where you want to study or 
look for applications that can help you do this payment you know you no know, trusted applications actually that can help you do this payment and then once your application process is um, almost completed that you've uploaded all your documents the next thing for you is to pay usually so get it ready and you wouldn't have any problem lastly document notarization okay so after all the things that i have listed usually at the point when your documents have been checked and they fit into the requirements of the school the next stage usually is that you get an examination or you get an interview and you get some mark for this interview or some for the quiz once everything is being collated and then you are worth the admission or you fit into the requirements of the school then you get a conditional uh, a conditional offer for this conditional offer the school requires you to send your document that's all the documents you've submitted during the application process requires you to send those documents to the school via post which means you take a photocopy of all the original documents you've sent to them and then you take it to a legal person who is going to certify the originality of your documents and then these documents will be packed together and then you send them to the university that is document notarization so i think with all these points that i've mentioned you are aware of the basic needs and requirements or the criteria you need to land yourself an admission this year next year or whenever because these points are actually basic points uh, for anybody studying anywhere around the world there are basic things you need to know and they need to prepare your mind for i hope this video has been informative for you and i want to thank you so much for viewing we have come to the end of this video i hope it's been informative for you please do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel for more informative content and also please give me a thumbs up for this content and do not forget to comment in the section below if you have questions or you have suggestions or you want to just appraise my work yeah i hope to see you again in my next video bye